Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Internet Computer Protocol is beginning $200 million payouts for grants to build on the Internet Computer Protocol. And we're going to be exploring some of these grant recipients and understanding a little bit more about the technology behind Internet Computer. As you guys know, in this 2024 year, I am becoming more and more of an Internet Computer bull. I do think that they have some of the best technology available right now that is already hosting decentralized AI, large uh, language models and smart contracts at a very high level. There is a very large community already that is building and uh, developing and uh, networking about internet computer. And I believe that we're going to continue to see the internet computer ecosystem grow. We're going to be starting right here with chain key X, which is a newer, um, exchange. It's a non-custodian neobank for Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's called ChainKey X and Dfinity recently highlighted this on their X page. And it says ChainKey X is a non-custodial neobank on ICP and allowing users to earn interest by depositing ChainKey Bitcoin or ChainKey Ethereum. Borrowers can use their liquidity provision tokens as collateral to borrow the CK Bitcoin or CK ETH sharing swap fees and repayment, repaying fixed interests. And so this is one of the capabilities of the internet computer is the ability to uh, bridge through this chain key technology that near protocol is also now using and merge or be able to cross chain communicate on Bitcoin and Ethereum directly from the internet computer protocol, which allows for more liquidity on the chain and also this borrowing and lending ecosystem. So this is one example of a project that is already uh, kind of rolling out in the ICP ecosystem. But remember, Internet Computer Protocol's Dfinity Foundation, which is the main developer behind the Internet Computer, they have a grant program that they launched, I believe, in late 2023, that they funded with $200 million worth of funds that are available to these grant recipients. So far, there's about 405 grantees. You can go on the website and see what the company does, how much money they got, uh, I believe now there is a uh, kind of like a staggered distribution. So as we see other ecosystems that are just deploying money and just giving them money out, Internet Computer wants to see number one, progress, and number two, MVP, minimum viable products, right? So if you say you're going to build something, like <laughs> let's see that you already built it, right? You have to kind of show that you can build something before you just get money handed to you. And that's very different than other ecosystems in crypto that are just literally handing out money for years at this point, and we've seen close to zero return on investment. And so my view on this is that if Internet Computer Protocol or Dfinity are handing out $200 million to grantees over the course of time, I would expect to see at least a 5x return on that investment, which is a billion dollars, uh, probably more than that, but at a very minimum, a 5x in, in returned value. So if you're giving, let's say, you know, let's just choose a project that got a $160 million ICP swap. So if, if they're giving $160,000 to ICP swap, you would anticipate that at least we would see half a million dollars in return on investment from what ICP swap is doing. Now, personally, uh, I believe ICP swap was a good investment, right? It created a native and earliest DEX on ICP offering comprehensive financial and market services. We just did another video. It's probably out or it's going to be out uh, shortly about ICP swaps, uh, airdrop token, uh, schedule and that they want to burn airdrops after 30 days. If the airdrops were, have not been claimed. And this is just one example of the fact that ICP Swap does have an ecosystem that is still developing, still putting out proposals for the community to vote on for the betterment of the entire ICP ecosystem. So in my view, personally, I think that this was a good investment because they do have a product. You can go on ICP Swap and swap different coins on for different, uh, different assets, whether they're native assets and ACP or their chain key connected through interoperability. So that's just one example. We're not going to go through all of these because there's obviously 405 different <laughs> programs that have already been um, granted the money. But as you see, like some of them only get $5,000, right? And so 
I do think that it's a smart idea for ICP to give smaller amounts to more and then see which of these companies or projects are building products and releasing things. Because when I'm recording this, it's right after the Bitcoin halving of 2024. So we're in the bull market. And part of being in the bull market is you have to deploy, not talk about this is what we're going to build. It's too late already. So at this point, for me, the way that I look at these grand programs is that these are accelerators, right? So for instance, if I'm building a product or to get, let's say I run ICP swap, right? It, I don't, it's a DEX and it's a, it's a DAO as well in ICP as well. So basically the community owns it, but let's just say I was the CEO of ICP swap, right? And we were going to, to bridge or give the ability to, to merge, you know, ICP coins to other blockchains, maybe to Polygon or Ethereum or whatever. But to do this, we need to hire developers to work around the clock to get this uh, tested and deployed within 30 days. And so Dfinity would probably look at that and say, okay, they need $200,000 to get this deployed in 30 days. They already have, um, you know, proof of concepts. They already have successful projects that have launched from funds that we've gotten. Let's get this money distributed so that we can get this quickly accelerated and done. That's kind of the way that I view grants during the bull run. During the bear market, obviously you have all the time in the world because nobody's really interested in anything. Nobody really started talking about internet computer until this year in 2024. Anyway, um, back to the new grant recipients. So these latest group of grantees include teams of internet computer solutions within decentralized identity, decentralized AI, and decentralized finance. Now, the, the projects that we're going to be going over, they haven't yet updated their website uh, so that we can see exactly how much money they got. But hopefully in the near future, this will be updated. So we're going to start with Civic Key. Civic Key identify, it says that they are identity tools for Web3 ID and age verification. Civic Key is a leading provider of identity and access management solutions. DApps on ICP will be able to manage access for certain principles based on specific verifications. So this goes into digital identity, right? Uh, being able to control your information and release it to specific parties. So for instance, if you have to prove that you have a certain amount in your bank account, you can open that access to, you know, the financial service provider that wants to know that information. If you have to show your doctor medical care from, you know, maybe another doctor, you can open that information up. And we're seeing this happening kind of across the board, this digital identity. Uh, that's what it's being called effectively. This is kind of like a social credit score, like it's already underway. Um, it's just how it's going to be, um, how it's going to be marketed to the masses. And so having this on blockchain, I do think is important. And hopefully the proof of concepts that they're able to create, they can get large scale, uh, implementations because that's really where the development of decentralized AI is. It's not for like one offs. It's like, oh, well, you know, you could do this on this application only. No, we need to see these kind of projects, especially with decentralized identity going into large scale um, deployments, right? Obviously you have to start small, but so that you could prove the concept and make sure that everything works properly. And so this is where they need test nets and, and, you know, testing grounds and stuff like that. But eventually really, you know, I would imagine Dfinity or the Dfinity developers or Civic Key go to hospitals and doctor's offices and solutions like that to get this digital identity implemented, right? A lot of the medical system, at least in the US already is on, you know, um, one or two or three major providers of uh, like apps where you can see your medical records, you can see, you know, the, the billing and all of that. And so putting that stuff on blockchain, I think is going to be critically important, especially when we're seeing all of these hacks of data that just keep happening, right? And, and so having that immutable and secure environment, which blockchain is, could be a game changer, but they have to make sure that it, it, it's secure and it works. Um, so obviously I have building these products are important, but I also think that they am marketing the security and the testing of the security, maybe having bounty programs is super critical. And maybe this is where Dfinity comes in with the grant program, either with this $200 million, or maybe they have a separate fund 
for bug bounties where they just tell developers, we're, we'll pay you a million bucks if you can break this system, right? Because if they can break it, then they can fix it. And I think that that could also help create a more, um, a better environment for these projects to go mainstream, right? Whether it's in the medical industry, the titling industry, right? For ownership of cars or ownership of homes, uh, the financial industry, obviously we know the banks are already moving into a uh, blockchain types of technology. Education is super important as well. Um, jobs for their employee data and in their employee salaries and all of that kind of financial information I think is super important. So yes, I love seeing that Dfinity is funding some of these projects to continue to develop. It's called Civic Key or Civic Pass, Trust Control and Safety for a Digital Identity. Moving right along, they also have funded ICP GPT by ICP Pro. It's the first fully on-chain large language model or chat GPT like chat box. Now personally, well, first it says they will port Llama CPP, a large language model inference in C++ to internet computer and implement stable memory to allow users to save their conversations. I'm surprised like crypto people are still using C++. I remember I took a course on C++ back in the day and I was like, and our, our professor actually said like, there, nobody really uses this anymore. And well, many, many years later, they're still using it. <laughs> anyway, um, Personally, I think that this whole chat GPT version of AI, it's very like primitive, right? I mean, I feel like they've already been using this for years. Like if you go on a website and they're like, hey, I'm your chat bot, I can help you out with this customer assistance. They've been doing this for years. When you call companies, uh, their, their customer service line and they're like, please say what you're calling about. And then you say it, I mean, this is large language models. Like maybe we've already been, maybe we've just been training these models, but this is boring. For me, this is not that exciting. I understand that this is kind of the first step and first integration of AI technologies for a lot of companies and blockchains, including internet computer. Just personally, it's kind of, it's kind of boring, right? This is not, um, to me, like even chat GPT, it's not like revolutionary, right? Asking it like, Hey, uh, how, give me, uh, what can I do if I go to vacation in Italy? And then it's like, well, you can go here and here and here. It's like, I understand why people want that. I mean, you could have already found it. There's a lot of websites that are like top 10 things to do in Italy. But personally, like I like to research that stuff myself, right? Because I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Because if you ask ChatGPT or go on, you know, the top 10 things to do in Italy, everybody is doing those things, right? So yes, touristy stuff is fun as well. But you want to do things that are not just you know, the touristy stuff, right? Like if you go to Las Vegas, you don't want to just stay on the strip. A lot of people just stay on the strip, but there's so much other things to do outside of the strip. If you go to, you know, Italy, right? Everybody is doing like, if you go to UK, everybody's doing the, what is the tourist thing to do, right? Go see this bridge, go see Big Ben, go see this. It's like, okay, that's cool and all, but like what else is there to do, right? Don't you want to see like some of the other cool things that are maybe not, uh, you know, the, the top 10 touristy things, right? What about number 11 or 20? Anyway, uh, so yeah, large language models, I understand why they're, they could be helpful, but they're, it, it's very boring technology, right? I, I, yeah, anyway, uh, but congratulations to them. Because I do think that it's needed, uh, at least these, these, first steps for AI implementation. And we already know based on previous videos that we've done here and based on what Dfinity and Dominic have shown that internet computer can do more from an AI perspective than just LLM. Anyway, moving on, Agius or Aegis Finance developed by this person is a DeFi platform that helps users hedge risk. It offers inflation-based insurance contracts and options backed by internet computer, chain key Bitcoin, and chain key Ethereum. So that's very interesting because, you know, if we look at the DeFi ecosystem within internet computer, it's it's still in development, right? I don't want to say it sucks or it's it's underperforming because compared to these other blockchains, I don't think that it is. So let's just look, let's come out of the top 10 of top DeFi protocols by total value locked, right? Let's come out of the top 10. I mean, Aptos is number 19, 
Cardano's down to 27. I mean, it was number nine a few months ago, and now it's number 27. <clears throat> anyway, we're not even talking about that. So just to give you a perspective, Cardano has $282 million of TVL. And if we look at internet computer, it's in the, I think the 90s. Yeah, ICP is 95 million. So effectively, ICP is one third the TVL of Cardano, and ICP really has not developed their DeFi ecosystem. I personally, from what I've seen and read, Definity knows this. This is a huge challenge. The developers and engineers that are building on internet computer understand that this is a huge challenge for ICP to overcome. But it's very easy to overcome because it's not like internet computer has been working on DeFi and they just have not garnered any DeFi locked. This was not even a focus for internet computer. The whole financial side, it doesn't even seem like, it, it seems like internet computer was more about compute and, uh, um, you know, kind of like storage or um, file coin type of projects. And now they're branching out because their technology and their blockchain can handle more than just that. So now they're starting to focus on DeFi. So where ICP is going from zero to 100 million, Cardano is going from 500 million to 200 million. That's, that's a big, it's going in the wrong direction. ICP is going in the right direction, in my view. So yeah, uh, Agius Finance, congratulations. And we also have Jagged Official is a mobile wallet app designed to make financial transactions fast and secure. It will allow users to convert ICP to JIDR, which represents the Indonesian rupiah. So that's actually very interesting because we don't really see other blockchains, especially in the DeFi space or the stablecoin space, talking about any coins connected to other currencies outside the dollar. And while the dollar is the world reserve currency and widely used around the world, there's countries that don't use the dollar, right? And they're, they're not even like thinking about the dollar. And so understanding that internet computer is potentially going to tap into this, um, this entire ecosystem of potential users that don't even interact with the dollar or dollar stable coins. And so I don't know how many people live in Indonesia I don't know how many people are in the finance world in Indonesia, but I would imagine it's probably similar numbers to other countries that we talk about here on the channel. So the fact that internet computer is opening up this whole country to decentralized finance within a wallet that connects to their currency or represents their currency, this could be really big, especially as blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies continue to uh, to grow in, in usage and popularity. And so, yeah, I mean, this whole, this whole thing about developer grants, for me, like this is not the end all. Like some of these projects may do really well, some of them may, may fail, right, and do nothing. But the bottom line for me is that Definity and Internet Computer, they're looking for new developers. They want new projects. They want to help, um, you know, bring these projects on chain. And again, this is very different than other blockchain ecosystems out here that are saying, no, 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 we don't need that. We don't need to do that. We don't want that. We don't need new developers. F the new developers. And there's a lot of those, including in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's, it's kind of closed wall. They're like, no, 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 no. You want to change what in the ecosystem? You want to build what? No, that's never going to work. And it's like sometimes the, the, the OGs actually hold their ecosystems back, right? The OG Ethereum maximalist. The, I was going to say Arbitrum Maximalist, but Arbitrum is brand new, so I couldn't say Arbitrum, but the Bitcoin Maximalist, the Polygon Maximalist, the Cardano Maximalist, they sometimes hold their own protocols back because of their OGs that are like, no, 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 we don't need that. Or they're invested in something that they want to work so bad that they will gather the troops to kind of push the newer projects out. And this is, this is really bad for the, this, the, the health of the blockchains overall. And this is why I think that Definity, because of what happened during the launch of Internet Computer Protocol, right, with the manipulation that we saw in the price and this price suppression that was going on, I think that the people who stayed in the Internet Computer Developer ecosystem, these are probably some of the brightest and smartest people in the world. And they understand that collaborative efforts are the key, right? Making Internet Computer better for everyone whether it's your protocol or my protocol or your project or my project, 
If everybody succeeds, everybody succeeds. If we're trying to, not, if we're like not cheering each other on, thinking that, oh, if, if we don't cheer that person on, we'll succeed, that, that's bullshit, right? And that is why we see Solana's ecosystem flourishing, is because all the venture capitalists, they don't care what you think about Solana. <laughs> and they don't care what each other think about Solana either. All they know is that they're invested in it and that if Solana doesn't work out, they're not going to see a return on that investment that they've made, whether it was a financial investment into the coin, whether it was a coin and financial investment into projects and products built on the blockchain. If, if one doesn't succeed, there's a high likelihood others are not going to succeed either. So everything, everybody cheering on and everybody hoping that everybody succeeds. This is why I'm really big on interoperability. This is really why I'm big on all of these ecosystems doing well. But there's ecosystems out here, they don't want other ecosystems to do well. They'll jump on other ecosystems as soon as they go, they have, you know, uh, an issue with their blockchain or with the security or a hack or whatever. And I don't think that that's the internet computer protocol. And we're seeing this in real time because I think ICP is winning, right? And I think they're going to continue to win through this cycle. But as I always say, these are just my opinions. I could be wrong. Do your own research. Never make investment choices based on what I say. Again, I can be wrong about anything and everything that I say. But do me a favor. Give the video a free thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think about Internet Computer down below in the comments. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Crypto on.